Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good. We almost have our water hooked up last night. We just needed one more little piece. And you never know when you go to redo pipes, some of the older couplers or um, different different fittings, they, they have like a, um, different names for them. But anyway, uh, we needed one more piece. We think that it'll be solved this afternoon. So I don't know how long this video will be or if I'll be able to do some more later. Um, it, it depends. This pump that we're putting in now, a different one, is a lot quieter than the one we had before. So I might be able to even make videos without the noise because um, it's right under that workbench right there. We were going to move it because um, we're going to put a holding tank on it too so it didn't run as much. But um, we don't think the tank that we have is going to fit in that um in another well in here period so either this place or the other place across the wall so either way as long as it's working but i'll have lots of laundry and dishes to do later which is great i don't care as long as our water's running that's um the main thing so i was playing some uh music this morning. I was looking for Petula Clark's song, Sign of the Times. Um, it's a sign of the times, I believe, from 1966. I found that, but then I found Harry Styles' Sign of the Times song, and then Everywhere Are Signs, Signs, Everywhere Are Signs, by the Five Finger Electric Band, 1971. So, there's all kinds of signs out there. Sign of the time is right. So, yeah. I don't know. I just, it popped in my head like Petula Clark's song. One of the songs I liked when I was a kid, you know. Now I'm thinking Leonard Skinner's Give Me Back My Bullets. <laughs> if you know that song, I'm probably going to play it later. Freebird used to be my song, and um, Tuesday's Gone. My adopted brother used to play that for me because they could never, they couldn't capture my essence, so to speak. They couldn't keep me uh, around any type of um, nonsense. I just don't do it. And in fact, that's, um, Doug mentioned that, like, my personality, how they, I wouldn't act how they wanted me to act. They wanted me to be a model. They sent me to modeling school and I got, I could have had a contract with Vogue Jr. Wouldn't do it. I wouldn't smile on command for them or do, I just, I couldn't do it like those other girls did it. I mean, I could have, but I would have felt like I was selling my soul, and I was smart enough to know that at 12 and 13. So I did model a little bit in um, catalogs for uh, wards, you know, like the Sears and Roebuck book, that type. Um, but that was in um, On a Runway Live and a couple different times, and Eh, it was okay, but I just felt, and it's just like with dancing, I thought about dancing um, like in Vegas for the money, but I knew that um, I would be selling a part of myself like that, so I just couldn't do it. I had the offers, but I wouldn't do it, so yeah, what people will do for money is a lot different than what I would do you know, so, but, oh, and then Doug said to me, did you know, and he goes, I know you hate that, and I do, because usually what he tells me, I know, it's not much, if he's telling me something about something mechanical, perhaps I'm going to learn it from him, but if you're telling me something about what's going on on this planet, you're not going to do the did you know to me because I do know, <laughs> you know. 
I, I'm serious. Try it. <laughs> but he goes, I know you hate that. I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know. I know that sounds a little vain. You know, I don't know what's in everybody's mind in general, what's going on on this planet. I, I'm in the know, you know, because I see it in my mind's eye and then I'll see it out. And But I have a like a double layer, maybe sometimes triple layer of understanding on what's going on. So that's why I keep talking, you know. I'm uh, listening to uh, Professor Bachman. I never get sick of listening to people talk about um, psychology or matters of the mind. I just don't, especially people that are suffering with any kind of illness and they're overcoming. And, and to understand, like, if you have some kind of nar narcosis or whatever, if you, or psychosis, um, and you have a deep understanding of who you are as a person, and you can explain that to other people in a way that will protect them in the world. Um, I never get sick of that type of attitude with people helping other people. I don't care who they are, you know, if they have that drive in them to help other people. They're, they're heroes to me, you know. It's like I have a Facebook friend. His kids used to be a little um, smaller. Now they're teenagers. And he used to not put the share button on his stuff, but I would copy him. And then, you know, always like his stuff. I don't take ever take people's information like they have me. And take my stuff and use it out there and not even say thank you. You know, I will not do that to people. Just won't. I heard just uh, last week somebody said something that I had reported on six years ago. And they took it for themselves. They waited all this time to use almost my exact explanation of stuff. And there's only one place they could have heard it, you know, it's like, okay, then, then people show who they are. That's always a good thing too, because, you know, that's always a, a protective measure too. It's like, if you know somebody or you're getting to know somebody and then you find out that they're not all that they say they're cracked up to be, well, um, you you should be thankful because at least you didn't spend like an entire decade um, worrying about another person or, or giving them any kind of information. There's people I gave information to and they'd rather go listen to false information than they would communicate with me. I'm not good enough to be their friend in public. <laughs> yeah. Or if I was, I'm not anymore, I guess. Um, I'm naughty because I won't put up with the nonsense, you know. And yeah, you're lesser. <laughs> no, excuse me, not you people, but you know who I mean. If they act lesser, that's who they are. They showed us their true colors. And somebody told me when I didn't like their brother preaching and yelling at the same time, that I sh showed my true colors. Oh, I absolutely did. If you're going to um, urinate on me, I'm going to pour the whole bucket on you. I think they call it a honey pot. That's the honey spot. <laughs> That's what they take out of me. That's what I give them right back. I'm, I'm not, um, I'm passive and I have a lot of patience, but yeah. You know, up to a point. So, yeah, give me back my bullets. You're not a marksman anyway, and I deserve mine because if I'm going to hit something, it's going to be the target we're after. I'm not going to pretend to hit a so called friend and still pretend to be your friend. 
if I'm going to hit you, it's because you're my foe. So, and I won't miss. I don't do that. I'm a dead eye. So give me back my bullets. They don't belong to you. You stole them under false pretenses. And I hate talking to stupid people, empty-minded twits that only are on a surface level for themselves. That's uh, extremely irritating to me. You know? Like when I point out what a demon is, like I'm supposed to just sit back and let people act demonic and not say anything about it. It's like the Mason's Jesuit Eastern Star that raised me. You know, what? Like I'm supposed to be appreciative of your dark side? Nah. I don't pretend mine. If I say uh, there's a possibility that you're going to go to hell, well, and if I want to take you there now, you're not going to put me down for feeling like that. Straighten your fucking shit up and I won't say stuff like that. Get control of yourself. No self-control. That's, that's, uh, ugh, disgusting. And then to exhibit your lack of self-control in front of the whole world. People that do that. The immaturity of it all. If I'm going to act immature, it's probably going to be with my anger that you deserve. And if that's immature, that's about as immature as I get. You know? Even with my kids, I'm like that. I mean, they know. They know exactly what buttons to push and why they're pushing them, you know. And it's like, okay, that's who you are. That's what you've shown me. I don't care. I mean, I look back at their baby pictures, and I um, some of them I don't have as many. I had some stolen from me, and I gave a bunch away. But others, like my oldest son, um, they almost got destroyed in my house fire. Like the spot on my oldest son, um, it looks like a light reflection. It's actually from the smoke and the heat that was in my house. So I saved some of the pictures, but not all of them. And I did put some in another area that are all smoky and yeah even like my oldest kid's tennis shoes he had little tiny sneakers blue ones and some of his baby shoes I had set up on top my refrigerator in my house before it burnt down and um part of my back bedroom and living room and smoke got into my kid's room and into the kitchen area and his shoes were perfectly fine. They were like they got smoky on top of the refrigerator, but I didn't ever put them on them again. I kept them, not the tennis shoes, um, but I kept his little white ones, his first shoes, you know, or maybe not. No, they weren't his first ones. His very first ones he couldn't even walk were about, like, that big, <laughs> you know. I had the coolest outfits for my little guys, like, tiny little jeans about, like, that big and little dress outfits and little Oxford shoes and different things, you know, just really, really cute stuff, you know. Because, um... The second one, I was hoping kind of in a way for a girl, but in another way, I wasn't because um, of who their father was. And I thought that the boys would be safer. It didn't matter. I found out when you have somebody that's animalistic, 
around children, it doesn't matter the gender that your child is, that parent is going to destroy that child because that's their nature. That's what they were taught in the generation before that and just keeps going and going and going. But one thing I did do is I said a prayer that none of that bloodline would ever have another male in their bloodline. And so far they haven't. So I heard rumors where my oldest son has a son. I don't believe it because from what I can tell from my four granddaughters, my prayers were answered. So I think that some woman is lying that um, my son has a son because I don't believe it. I think, I mean, I could have a grandson out there, but I don't think I do. You know, that's why I don't think I do because a lot of the times, my prayers are answered if it if there's a good reason why it should be answered <laughs> that you know and <clears throat> that seems like a miracle to me oh and they're mad too they in fact i think not only my sons were mad but I think that the women that they were with were sort of mad at my prayer, too. I think they understand now. But at first, when they heard me say that, I don't think that they understood what I was saying. <laughs> they do now. No, we don't want any more of those on this planet. The ones that are left, that's too many already. the type of people that will do and say anything like Machiavellian um, or manipulation, you know, say and do anything to get their way with other people. That's enough of this out on this planet, and I'm not going to pray for anybody's um, family. I mean, I'll pray for their family. I'm not going to pray for somebody to... Uh, to have more offsprings of the same when it didn't work the first few times, you know, it's like, nah, even with my input as stable as I am, that didn't help the sickest minds and hearts. If I can't help them, only God can. Huh. And for people to not want my help, I don't know. I don't understand that part, but you know, I mean, or even, or even to not like me. I give nobody. I don't give anybody a reason not to like me. I never have. Now, if they give me a reason not to like them, I may not like them back, and I might even do or say something about it. Because I'm not them and they're not me. You know? I don't know. Just speaking my mind. Got my old t shirt on. Tweety, Tweety Bird. <laughs> um, this was like our style in the. Uh, this is how adults dressed in the 90s in the United States. We cut up our clothes, and, or even in the 70s, we started doing that. Then they came out with my favorite brand of um, uh, would be called leisure or exercise clothes was, well, two, dance skin and bum equipment, those two. I just loved, in fact, I have some dance skin shoes right now that are pretty cool, a pair of clogs, but actually dancing shoes, but, huh. so I'm a bum, but I don't act like one, I dress like one, <laughs> but I don't act like one.
got my exercises in and I'm just waiting for the water and then like I say I got I got some hard work to do ahead of me but that's okay not scared of that I'm not gonna get on here and treat you crabby because I have hard work to do do you have people in your life like that Ugh, that's 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 too much. Like when, if two people have work to do and one is complaining about it, that can take your energy away from you. Don't let people do that to you. I'm not, I won't listen to certain people just because of that. It's because they're low vibing, like poor me type of they're in a, in a lower vibration than I can handle. I can't do that. I mean, if somebody's having like, occasionally, you're having a rotten day, and you were to come on here and say, look, it's just really hard for me to talk right now. You've heard me say these things, and so I might not be too happy or whatever, but I'm going to warn you all about it. I'm not going to sit there and pretend that I'm not laying my emotional stress upon you I'm going to give you a warning so you don't catch that on yourself you know because that's a narcissist they will put that lower vibe on you they love it if they can take the happy out of you that's their goal they won you know it's like I watched somebody that used to be funny there's no more laughter you know just isn't you know so what's to watch it's it's there's no human connection there um these people that do that are only talking to themselves or like-minded people smaller minds than what i desire <laughs> you know their hearts could be all in it but they might be doing it wrong because they don't put enough thought in it they, they have too many selfish genes in there to take time to um, worry about somebody else's feelings, except for maybe they are immediate people, but you or I, they don't care, you know. So, cheers, everybody. It just started raining out. It's pouring, as a matter of fact. That's cool. Because if something goes wrong with the water again today, like, say, for instance, right now, um, Doug went to get a piece of pipe. About It's a coupler, about yay big. Um, and if that doesn't work, or if there's any leaks, he's got a... Um, chiropractor appointment at three o'clock so he might not be able to get it all put together and I could do it too I grew up around plumber and my dad worked for the water department he was a uh, um, supervisor of the Minneapolis North um, District Water Department but uh, so I mean I know quite a bit about water mains and connections and um, drilling and pounding wells and casings and couplers and you name it. I've actually like in our bathroom sink and in my kitchen sink, I've redone my own plumbing with like Doug came home one time from work and I was here at home, but I had went and got pipes for underneath my kitchen sink and redid everything he didn't even know about it till he got home and I'm like hey look what I did look what I did <laughs> no you know so I mean I'm not totally helpless and I could finish it I could have done it by myself but it is hard in fact with two of us made it a lot easier I could have really tortured them and made them do everything you can't barely well you'd have to use like um clamps and vices and different devices to hold the pipe so you can wrench on the couplers and that takes three or four hands 
<laughs> and if you don't have three or four hands, you have to be smart enough to figure out how you're going to do that by yourself. Reminds me of working on, I had this, um, I think it was a Dodge Colt, or it could have been a Horizon, but the alternator was down underneath the starter, and the coil was in a funky place, too. Um, I can't remember which one I was changing, but um, you just had to be like, like an octopus to work on some of them things. And um, like one time I took a motor out, and when I went to put it back in, I could not get that one. Um, um, oh, just a minute. <laughs> I'll tell you. It was a bolt that held the whole motor in. And I couldn't get that one in there the right way. I went and got another bolt that was smaller. I was able to kind of get it in there sideways. And um, then I had to adjust the timing with the timing belt. Wasn't a chain. There's back in the days they were timing chains and you'd use a timing light. But this was a belt, belt driven and it was a little bit different. But I, I come in the house... When it first happened, before I had remedied it, I came in the house and I started crying. I had two little kids. I had to fix my car by myself, pulled the motor out in a tree, and went to put it back in after I got the timing belt off and the new one back on and the cover on it and all that. And then adjusted it. and But for a while there, I came in and I started crying. And then I gathered my strength and went back out there and tried again a couple times. And I finally got it. That was some rough days. It took me a couple days. You know? <laughs> it was horrible. So I really don't, you know, and no offense really to women that haven't done these manual things. Um, I don't care when you break a nail or if you have to lift your own groceries or, you know, whatever. I do not care. <laughs> That's why I don't care. So why would I? Do you see what I mean? <laughs> I hope you see what I mean. Yeah. That's why. And I did build my own car when I was 17, too, so it wasn't anything when I was nine, I started changing tires with my dad there. And then when I was um, 12, I was doing things and I, you know, by myself, changing oil, a lot of things by myself when I was a little kid, because my dad did not want me to be dependent on any man because he knew how men take advantage of women. And so he helped make me as deep independent as I am and uh, I'm forever grateful about that you know probably wasn't the best thing back in them days that's a rough life in a in an era where women were more, more feminine and my problem was like even as a little kid wanting to dress like a girl in a world that didn't deserve any girls in it, <laughs> you know, and I still feel like that. Most men don't even deserve to have a woman in their lives because they don't know how to treat her the right way, so, and they really don't, but they think they do, and they might even um, have things in common with that woman that is not thinking right either, and that's not helping her. Um, it's just like me. If you're not willing to lose who you're, who you love entirely for what you stand on, or even who your friends are, I am. I'll tell Doug, look, this is the way it is with this person. This is the way it is with you and I. And if he doesn't love me enough to pick himself up and follow me as his, then 
I don't need it. Period. And everybody should feel that way with your spouse. If you know in your heart and your mind something is right, then you stand for what is right and who is right. You know, unless it's not an issue with you, then by all means carry on and drag that woman down to the dump where y'all are going, you know. So sign of the times, you know. So, and I'm I've always been like that. That's why I refuse to lie. I don't think it's in me. As a kid, I did some stupid things, and then I'd be afraid to tell the truth in front of my parents because I get my ass kicked. But then after a while. I got really obstinate. It's like, you can fucking beat me all you want. And I'm still not going to do what you want me to do. And that's another thing that Doug was saying this morning. I just didn't do what they wanted me to do. And I said, yeah, I didn't suck there like my brother would to get what he wants out of them. I refused. I won't lower my dignity like that. No way. You know, I'd rather be poor and out in a tent, cold and hungry, than to bow to some devil-worshipping, trashy piece of shit. I won't do it. So, not for money, not for fame, not for friends, not for not a marriage, nothing. Nothing is going to make me bow to the person that used to control this planet and did a piss poor job at it. It's time to clean up this mess and, and don't cater to these lesser thans. Don't do it. Stand up strong. You're not going to help anybody by being weak and being a coward like that. It just doesn't work like that. You know? When my kids are sober-minded, they're thankful for all that I've taught them, you know. When they're screwed up, like the satanic force loves them to be, no, well, they hate me, you know. And I can live with that because I still know I'm doing and saying the right things, aside from the profanity. But maybe some of you feel like that, too, so you can get a kick out of it. I hope so. It's the only release of my aggression that I do have, so I don't carry that aggression and put it on you. You know, I think some of you are like that too, so. And when Doug told me, you know, like basically I know stuff, if not all of it, and how I hated, um, did I know? Do you know? Um, I said, well, yeah, well, excuse me. I said, God damn me all the hell for knowing that, you know, just being a smart ass to him. He's laughing, you know, he knows. And we've always known each other's spirits like that, you know, and people that um, carry that dark part of his spirit. I know who they are. If I can stand up to the big dog, you can stand up to one of his minions. Isn't that right? I'm showing you how to do that. That's how you do that. You're not going to help anybody coward by being a coward. So, And you can listen to him yap all day. And you might even lose your friends or family or loved ones along the way. But it just depends on people don't believe in eternity. That's what their problem is. So, at least that's how I feel about it. They're really not aware. They think it's just a one-time thing. You live once. Not that you never die. You know. And some people are really afraid of that. 
other people pay it no mind or they may think about it occasionally, but it doesn't really um, register, you know, that they're supposed to be doing something with their life other than playing with people, you know, it's not a game, <laughs> you know. Um, I watched for the second time. It's about um, particle physics and quantum entanglement and time um, called The Derelict. It's a pretty good movie if you're into physics. <laughs> it's a sci-fi. I would recommend it. It's kind of cool. Not the very best, but it, you know, it's good. It's a good movie. So. Well, I'm going to get this uploaded and I'll probably make a another one later if the pump isn't too noisy. Otherwise, I'll be back. Tomorrow, I'm certain, you know. Um, appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see, what else? Was there something else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, at one twenty or Eastern Time, the United States, 2.22, there's a public service announcement. I'm sure you all have heard in... Um, for us, it will be 320 uh, and 420 Mountain and Pacific Time will be, um, or wait, the other way around. No, no, I'm right. I'm right. We'll be 520. Or let me see. No, no, no. It will be 322 or no, 222 Eastern, 122 Central. 1222 Mountain Time and 1122 Pacific Standard Time is our public service announcements. So I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were you people. Um, if you're kind of a mindless twit, you might be a little bit scared, but there's really nothing to be frightened of on this planet. Unless you're in um, Mortal Kombat, you know, <laughs> and even then you might not be afraid. So, you know, depends on who you are. So, and, well, if you're a man fighting a woman, you might think that you're not afraid. Yeah, you might think that. <laughs> but I might show you different. And is that a challenge? Yeah. I've told people before, if you don't like me, I live in Pine City, Minnesota. I live three and a half miles off of the interstate, 35 north. Down, uh, I, if you want the directions, three and a half miles one way west, and then south a mile on the right-hand side, and I'm down in a valley by the creek. I'm really easy to find, and I will beat your ass out in my yard. Or, if I can come to your place and you want to spar, we could try it there. And I don't care how old you are, how big you are, who you think you are. That's my spirit inside of me. I think I made that pretty clear before, but it is the truth. And there are people that do want to learn from me some of my arts, but, um, yeah, and I, and I'm willing to teach, too, self-defense, but, yeah, anyway, and you can believe what you want, I don't care what you've practiced, <laughs> I don't have to practice, it's just in me like that, self-preservation is what it's called, so, I do love you all. I don't hurt innocent people. Just remember that. Now, if you're not, I have no guarantees on that, and I really don't care. 
if you get hurt or not, if you're not a nice person, you don't deserve not to be hurt. <laughs> so, anyway, but if you're a sweet person, I love you, and I never want you to be hurt, and I would defend you with my life. That's me. So, all right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have good night or day wherever you're at.